Okay, it is February 20th, 532. And this is the elected officials compensation advisory board meeting. Um, and this is a recorded session. Um, the meeting is for the next hour, but if it ends early, that's great. Just want to make sure everybody understands. Hey, Deb, I want to make sure that everybody understands that this is a recorded meeting um, as we go forward. So the first thing we need to do is to have a roll call. So Sam, do you want to please take us through a roll call? Yes, uh, John Bidwell. Present. Alicia Corbiel. Here. Deb Henson. You're, you're muted, Deb. I know, I'm trying to unmute. Hey, <laughs> right, perfect. I am here. Uh, Sam Hopper is here, and Peter Whalen. Here. And then and we have a quorum, so we're good to go. <laughs> okay, excellent. Um, we already announced that this is being video and audio recorded. Um, I say, are there any public comments? I don't see anybody here who isn't from the committee. Um, so I'm going to assume there is no public comment. And we'll move on to an approval of minutes from the previous meeting. Um, are there any comments on that before we vote? Yes, I just have to, I want to make an amendment to my own minutes. Okay. Um, in under the section that's discussion items, assignment updates regarding information gathering plan, I originally wrote Springfield City Council and it should be Greenfield City Council. Okay. Good catch. Thank you, Sam. Javier caught that. Um, that was my mistake. So I can, do we have to vote to amend it? Yeah, what we'll do is we'll vote to, uh, what we'll do is we'll vote to accept it with the amendment. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, any other changes? I move, I move we accept the minutes uh, as amended. As amended, okay, um, excellent. And Deb, looks like Deb seconded that. <clears throat> Held up two fingers, either that or a peace sign. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna say it's a seconded. All right, all those in favor? Um, I'll do a roll call. Oh, roll call, thank you, roll call. Uh, John? Um, yes. Felicia? Yes. Uh, Deb? Yes. Sam votes yes, and Peter? Yes. All right, thank you. Okay, excellent. Um, all right, now onto the discussion items. Um, so I wanna, I have this uh, in order of having the online survey and email as a working discussion to continue where we left off last week. That is um, after the assignment updates. Um, I would like to move that first, just to keep that going in case Felicia needs to get off and Tara's not here. Does that make sense to you, Felicia? <laughs> okay. All right, so uh, um, is is everybody, do we need to take a vote on that? And we don't need to take a vote in terms of the agenda, right? We just need to, okay, great. All right, so let's jump to the online survey and email um, so we can go through that. Um, let's first of all, take a look at the survey, um, which my understanding reflects all of the, oh, we need a username and password. This is what came up for you, Peter. Correct. Yeah, I noticed that because so when I originally sent you the link, John, I was like, oh, it's so perfect. Like you don't need to have a, a username to see it, but it was because I was logged in. And so then when I checked the links um, after you sent this agenda, I, I realized that issue. So um, I can. You so want to log course, in and share? Yeah, the survey is exactly the same as the one in Google. Um, it's just that it has like a different format. So I wanted people to be able to see the difference between the two. Um, the one thing that I liked about the fall trip survey is basically you were able to have two different pages. So there was like a whole separate page for the demographics. So I'm gonna share the screen. You should be able to share it. I just gave you permission. Okay. Um, 
you guys can see this okay. I can, this is, looks great. So it's showing us what it would look like on um, a large monitor and how it would reformat um, on a phone. Yeah, and so I'm, like I said, it's the same questions um, as the Google survey. So this is kind of the first page that we talked about with like um, the, the compensation type questions, um, the, the elected official questions, and then you go to the next page. And I don't mean to scroll quickly, it's just they, the questions really are exactly the same. Mm -hmm. um, and then on this page is those demographic, are those demographic questions about the, the gender, the race, age, household income, and education. And okay. then that's, that's All right, and it's excellent. And now just to reiterate, are all of these going to you and or Tara, or are they going into um, like a spreadsheet? Are they gonna auto-populate a spreadsheet? So based on my understanding from what um, Javier said last week, I think that they would all go to my account that I created. Um, but I was also thinking in terms of like the Google Docs survey or anything like that. I don't know if you want me to make one where it's like kind of general to the whole group where I could share the login information with the whole group. So then that way any one of us could access it if that's something that we would feel more comfortable with having. Um, but yes, this would create a, um, some type of like, uh, graphic that would show the answers and the responses to each question. Same thing with the Google Docs survey it does create something like that. Okay. So, um, what I'd like to do, <clears throat> Deb, you have a question? Well, no, not if, go ahead. John. Well, what, I, yeah, what I was hoping to do, Felicia, is if we could just quick, if we could just walk through it a little more slowly just to make sure that if we have any last minute questions or we can address that. Um, and then let's, after we've walked through the document slowly, um, let's see how the group feels about whether it auto populates into a spreadsheet or whether you report that out. Does that work for you? Yeah, that's fine. Great. Sure. Great. Deb, did, does, Deb, did you have a okay, question? Done. Okay. Okay, um, so first question, what elected position did you or do you currently hold for the city of Northampton? That was modified, uh, great, from um, past to present as, as well. How many years did you hold or have you held the elected position? What year years was the elected position held? Approximately how many hours per week did you or do you spend on the elected position? Um, okay, yep. I remember we added the zero to five. That's great. Mm -hmm. Any questions so far from the group? I'm kind of going through a little quickly and not deliberately, but just trying to be uh, aware of Felicia's <laughs> childcare situation too. I was gonna say, can you hear them banging in the background? I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. It's that uh, they, they, they <laughs> augment the committee. I think that's great. If they have any input, let's make sure it, it is open to public comment. So if they have anything they want to add. They are Northampton residents. <laughs> they are Northampton residents. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Um, okay. Did the pay benefits have an impact on your decision to run for the elected position? Yes, no. Please explain the positive or negative impacts the pay and benefit had have on you. By the way, I read this out loud, not because I think any of you can't read. Um, I just find that when it comes to editing, it's helpful to read it out loud um, and more likely to catch any errors. Mm -hmm. I'm on an iPad, so I really appreciate it because I can't. I can't. Oh, okay. okay. That's the tiniest, tiniest lettering in the world. From my yeah, yeah. Well, it'll adjust. Um, the next question is, um, how much money are you going to give to Peter Whalen? <laughs> <laughs> um, what type of occupation and parenthetical compensated or uncompensated did you or do you have while holding the selected position? parenthetical, if any. Mm -hmm. If your elected position has ended, why did you end your elected position? Did you feel the compensation was fair for the elected position you held, hold, and the amount of work you did? I don't know if that becomes did, do. Well, did. I think I would just keep it. That's exactly the same exact thought I had. I was like, uh, I think I'd have to double correct it, but it's fine. <laughs> okay, I think we can get by with it. 
I have a question just a second about the previous sentence. If you if your elected position has ended, why did you end it? Now, what if it just expired because of the term? And would it be something to say why did you why did you not run again? I mean, I don't know, but did the person really end the elected position or does it just expire? So would it better that's a good point. Um would it read better is um why did the position end? Yeah, and then maybe they can explain, oh, I, I chose not to run again or whatever. Right, if because it may or may, again. may or may not have been within their control. Right, right. That's kind of what I was getting at. It, it seems like we're getting at why did you end it? Some people might have. Right. People might have just said, well, I just didn't run again for whatever reason, or I didn't get reelected or something. Mm hmm a lot of different answers several at least yeah some of them scandalous yeah scandalous yes i hope so yeah um okay so sam you've got that or no not sam felicia you're gonna make that change it's clear to yeah. you yep great. i'll make that change okay great i'm jumping down now to if you did not feel the compensation was fair briefly explain why did you or do you have any challenges attending required meetings? If you had have challenges attending required meetings for your elected position, what were they? And I think that's another one where it should be what are slash were, but I don't know if it's worth it to double it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think were in this case because it could also account up to that. I mean, it doesn't mean that it's necessarily an ended period of time. It could just be up to the very last meeting that you had troubles attending. Yeah. Um, would you I be interested? Question. question. Yes. yes, Peter. Uh, is there is this set up so that there's a unlimited space to respond? I think so. Obviously not the yes and no questions. Um, well, but in terms yeah, of obviously. Type, in, terms of, in terms of their typed responses, um, I I don't think there's a character limit. I'm sure there is some, probably something like a thousand or five hundred where okay. you know as long as they're not writing a book, I think it's okay. That's that's fine. I just wanted to make sure because you know why did you you know decide not to run again? That that could be you know uh, a, a several several words, maybe even a few sentences. Right. I think that should be um, accommodating. The answer boxes should be accommodating to anything that's like. Cool. basically five to 10 sentences. Okay, great. Great, we don't want more than that, so thank you. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah. They'll keep them a little short. Oh, would you be interested in serving as an elected official again? Why or why not? Do you know anybody in your community who was interested in running for an elected position but didn't? If you do, what made them ultimately decide not to run? That's assuming they answered no. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yes. I'm sorry. We, so. we could say if no, what made them ultimately decide to? Well, wait. I think it's fine. Uh, if yes, I if mean, I think I think it's. Yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Deb. No, that's okay. I, I don't know that it's necessary to correct it. I mean, I think it it kind of makes sense, but. I think it I think it works too. It's not I don't find it confusing. It's not that no, it's not worth having to correct it, no. Okay. All right, Felicia, next. And so that page is just the demographic ages. Okay, great. What gender do you most closely identify with? Male, female, non-binary, third gender, prefer not to say. It, why are we asking these questions? To gather demographic information about elected, current, and past elected officials. Thank you. What race do you most closely identify with? American, Indian, Asian, Black, or African American, Hispanic, or Latino, Middle Eastern, Native Hawaiian, or Pacific Islander, white, other, prefer not to say? That's good. What is your age? Um, hold, I have a few questions about that. Mm -hmm. First, can you select more than one um, 
race and can we also add oh say race or ethnicity yep. because for people like me who are mixed race like i actually don't know how people perceive me so i usually fill in my ethnicity so should it read what race and then in parentheses or races backslash ethnicity ethnicities i think it? just race slash ethnicity is fine yeah but um what if there's more than one and i'm just trying to see like sorry i can't i also can't see the words that big so i just want to review these um yeah i do think you should be able to select more than one if that's possible felicia is that an option for Qualtrics? Yes. You know, I, I'm honestly not sure. I think it's very similar to Google though, where you can have, like on Google, I know that you can have different options for different questions and I'm pretty sure it's the same. I don't see why it wouldn't be the same, um, but I definitely would have to kind of play with it and tweak it just a tiny bit more. So that's definitely something I don't see why we couldn't do it. And I can definitely make sure that we're able to check that you know, check multiple ones when I make the final goal. Okay. Yeah, checking multiple and then also leaving a blank one where people can fill it in. Cause I mean, I, it, I'd i have to review this further to understand like, is this capturing? I don't know, I get really picky with these because usually my race is not listed. And so it's a little frustrating, <laughs> uh, but then it often can go down. She has other on there. I don't know if you can see it, but it says. Yeah, other. but just to be clear, like othering myself doesn't feel good. Like oh, being like, okay. oh, I'm an other. So it, it would be helpful to have one, something that's open where people can self-identify what their, what ethnicity or race they are. Uh, I thought the other was for that purpose to write in, but maybe it's not to write in. It's just. Or even if we change the other to like, a, a response box if, if that's an option because I agree with you Sam like I really didn't like putting I put other for almost every single one of these just as kind of like an alternative option but mm -hmm. as I was writing these it made me very aware of how people can be very you know sensitive to how these questions might affect them and I wouldn't want somebody to feel any type of way because of the way that the questions ask. So I think the more inclusive it can be, the better. And um, I'm definitely very happy to make any changes that you guys think would make it more inclusive and more welcoming to people. Do you think, uh, is this, I've never seen this done, but I'm sure some have. What if we didn't actually give options? What if we just left it open? Just because people fill these out all the time. What if it just sim simply said, what race, ethnicity, do you most closely identify with? And then the only option would be if they prefer not to say, and that would be like a radio button. And other than that, they just, individuals would fill out um, with what makes the most sense for them. I thought we would just have to tabulate that. It wouldn't tabulate in the, in any kind of system, but I don't mean we can just review it anyway. I'm sure we will be. So I, I like that idea. I think it's nice to just have people be able to say whatever they want and not pick a category. I think for some questions that could be good. Um, for others, I think it might be better to have it where you do have to pick something just because then it will kind of give that like survey like data points to us. Um, mm -hmm. But I mean, I guess for something like race and ethnicity, you know, in the grand scheme of things, like, does it have a big impact on on people's elected, um, you know, wanting to run for elected positions? Like, I don't, I don't know. So I think maybe for some of those we could, but I think other ones, it would still be really helpful to just leave the, the, the questions as is for the data that it's going to. Felicia, I was only thought, we, I thought we were only talking about this question. So oh. I, was only, I was only remarking as to this question, what race slash ethnicity do you most closely identify with? I think all the other ones, you know, age, blah, 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 I think is fine and to have it categorized. But I thought just this one was what I was needing. Uh, what do other people feel? I mean, I, I'm not committed to that. I'm simply throwing it out as an idea, nothing more. I, I, I like the idea. And I also agree with Deb, it was just applying to this 
this question. I so or at least this one so far. So far, uh, it does. It does seem to make sense. Sam, what's your input on that? Yeah, I see the only downside being that you're not going to get that data visualization. But yes, you you could do it. We'd have to have a discussion on who gets lumped where. But that can that actually gives us more time to think about the categories while moving forward with this part. OK, so does everybody agree to leave that open, except there would be a, a radio button underneath that says prefer not to say. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, you know, I don't think we're going to be getting so many dozens of these and it's going to be that big of an issue. Probably not. Right. But I think it is to be fair to individuals. Um, it, you know, it's an experiment. I don't I don't think we're going to be getting so many either. I, I would be interested to see what what happens, frankly. Sure. Let's go with it. OK, thanks. Um, what is your age? Under 29, between 30 and 39 years old between 40 and 49 years old, between 50 and 59 years old, between 60 and 69 years old, older than 70 years old, prefer not to say. Um, my only question to this is, would there be individuals who somehow feel that we're lumping everyone over 70 together? <laughs> you know, like, I, I don't know, you know, um, none of us fall into that category, but would there be people who feel like they'd want 70 to 79 and then 80 and above where you you know, that what makes me, my, my reaction to that is because I, I immediately thought the same thing, John, but then I also thought, you know, most, most people, not all, most people over 70 are retired. Yeah. Uh, um, and I don't know if that's relevant at all, but uh, it's just because, and I think people recognize that 70 is pretty generous retirement age. And so uh, above that, I, I'm looking for other comments, but that was my, I think over 70 is fine. And if it's, and if, and if we, it wouldn't be a whole lot of work to go 70 to 79 and then over 80, whatever, whatever we feel like. Any, any other comments on that? I just feel like I have run into a lot of people here. I'm kind of new to this area, but I have run into so many people who are in their 80s and still involved with things. So I think 70 to 79 and then 80 or over, I think that would be a better reflection of what I've seen around here. It's just a lot of really fascinating people that are still so active professionally, even after, you know, in their 70s. So I'm not, I, I wouldn't be opposed to adding another category. I think it's kind of better. I don't know why 80 is better than 90, but you know, I think at some point you got to call a halt to it. So I would prefer 70 to 79 and then 80 and over. Okay. Well, then in that spirit, should we also do 20 to 29? Because you can run for office in Northampton when you're 18. 18, really? Well, you just have to be able, you have to be a registered voter in the city. That's the requirement. Has anybody been so far? Because we're surveying people who are no people who are people who are either currently or in the past. I don't know if there's been anybody under 20 so far. No, I'm just. I mean, if we're adding one more question, why not? Right? Like, I don't know. Yeah. I have not gone through. I not that I know of, but. Oh, what you know? I would just add both. I know it's a lot of options, but people yeah. will quickly identify which category they're in. It's not like they have to think about it. I hope. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hope not. All right. Um, are we ready to move on to what's your annual household income? Less than fifty thousand dollars per year, fifty to seventy-five thousand dollars per year, seventy-five to a hundred thousand dollars per year, one hundred to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars per year, one hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand dollars per per year. Prefer not to say. Do we need something that's two hundred and above? Yes. Oh, yes. I don't, I don't know why there isn't one. <laughs> I thought they said that because yeah, that would make sense. Um, and then I did it in increments of twenty five thousand for the first two, and then fifty thousand because I kind of felt like, you know, when when you're at when you're making a lot of household income, you're probably more in like a, a different like bracket. But I can also break those up by twenty fives further if people think that's you know really important to them. 
Deb? I think the 25,000, that's fine, but I think it should be starting a little bit lower. I mean, what if we said less than 25 and then 25 to 50? Because I mean, you don't have to have money to, to be an elected official. And some people might think, oh, well, if you're starting at 50 and I'm way down here, I want to be on there too. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know really enough about the demographics. Is there any other input on that? I mean, in, in terms of income, rather, specifically. I'm just thinking, like, if you're looking at the federal poverty guidelines, I'm pretty sure it's about $30,000 for a family of four. So if we're trying to understand low income, that we might want to be more specific in the lower bracket. No, you're right. It is around 30. I think it's just just over 30. Um, but you're right. All right, let's um, then let's put a 25 to 50 or whatever it would be below the 50. Add one more line, please. Um, and are you guys okay with it being the $50,000 brackets after 100000 Does that seem like that makes sense or should those also be 25? I think it's fine. I'm fine with it. Okay. Uh, what is the highest level of completed education? Some high school, high school or GED, some college, but no degree, associate's degree, bachelor's degree, master's degree, PhD or higher, trade specific certification, other prefer not to say. When it comes to other again, do we need to have something where people would write it in? Or it seems like this is pretty inclusive. I don't, but you never know. Don't know what there's you don't no, know. There's no MD category. Right, although that's true. Um, but then you get into specifics, then, you know, would someone have a JD? No. I, I would like it if you, but it's not too difficult, Felicia. See, I was under the impression earlier that, that the other did give a response option. And if it's not too hard to write in, you know, to have one of those boxes where they can type in, is other doesn't really mean anything to me. I would I I would say other and then they have to say what other is. I would like that on every box that says other, just in case we need that information or I agree with that. I mean, Peter's, I think I agree with Peter's comment. It'd be interesting to see if there's certain degrees, uh, aggregate of certain degrees um, or not. Yeah, I said there must be a way where you can have one be a write-in if you choose it. Um, I don't see why that wouldn't be an option. And then that way, too, if people click it, it still gives us the, the data points, although we have to look at you know, the specific degrees within it, but um, yeah, I, I think that should be very doable. Great, thank you. Cool. And then right. that's it. Yeah, and then that's... Um, are Beautiful. there any other questions people think should make up the demographics? I thought I took most of them down from last time. I think there was one other question about wards, but I didn't think that that would be um, necessary in the sense where I was thinking about it. It's not like Northampton has like a part that has like like the like a, a richer part of the town or like a very poor part of the town. So I didn't feel like in that sense it would really give us much usable data. But um, or I also wasn't sure if people people might not know their ward or they might have moved. So their ward that they served in could be different that they live in so i didn't include that but otherwise i think i included all the ones that people had mentioned last week so I think the only comment i would add on the wards is that um there are some wards that have more lower income areas so florence you've got florence heights and parts of northampton you got northampton heights or you know i and i don't know how much those how much people in those communities get involved for instance um 
And then also with wards, it just might be interesting to see if there's certain wards that are overrepresented or underrepresented. The only thing is, I don't know how comprehensive this would be. One of the things that might be more helpful to get that information, frankly, would be to have the city run a list of everyone who's worked for the city and they know the addresses, what ward they're from. I'm, I'm assuming that most representatives live in the ward they represent. But it's required. I mean, obviously, if they've left office, it's not right. required. But I, I, my question is, what would we be looking for? What reason would we want the ward for? I mean, just because you're always going to have a city councilor for ward four, right? Like, right, right. So my concern about it is that it's an identifier for the respondent. So if they're trying to be anonymous, if you're saying that, yes, I was an elected official in Ward 6 during these years, <laughs> it's probably going to be, you know, really easy to identify them. And if they were trying to rename, remain anonymous, it may not be. I don't know if it's worth asking unless there's like a really useful reason that would help. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. yeah. The only other demographic I thought about, which, you know, you see on some surveys is whether you own or rent the place you live. I don't know if we want to distinguish, if it makes any difference at all, but that's the only thing that I just was thinking about surveys. They often ask about, you know, rent versus own, so. I, I like that question in general. I'm just wondering if it would give us anything more than we're already getting. It sort of goes back to Sam's question about the wards, like, at this point, I, I'm willing to not go with the ward question. Me too. Uh, and the similar, and for similar reasons, probably not ask about the home ownership. I think too, with like in terms of rent versus owning a home, I don't feel like it. It states whether or not somebody. It doesn't give a good picture of somebody's wealth because, especially in Northampton, rent prices can be extremely high. And if a person owns their home, they can be paying less money per month for it. So I also just don't feel like it gives like a good representation of like this person must be very well off or have a lot of money because they own a home versus rent a home. Okay, we'll leave it off. Does everybody agree to leave it off? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I have a couple of demographic questions. Um, Felicia, can you remind me on the income one, does it ask total household income or is it asking that the person who's responding their personal income? Um, I believe it was total income. To okay. okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> then it makes me wonder, can we add a question about how many dependents or like how many, uh, I don't know uh, what's the, what's the right wording, like how many people are supported by this total household income? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think that would make sense. So, um, yeah, annual household income. Um, How many in your household? Something like that. Well, or supported by. Do you want it to be supported by? The... Yeah, because you know, like, because I'm just thinking of dependents. It's it's yeah. not only children, and you know, I don't want to define where people yeah. necessarily live. Yeah. So how many? Yeah, how many, I don't know, do you say how many dependents are supported by the annual household income or how many people are supported by the annual household income? I would leave it more general and just say people because yeah. dependence is a tax status. You know, it's like, are you taking them as a dependent? Well, there could be different factors involved in that for somebody who's elder, an elder parent or something like that. Well, then I think it would almost make more sense to just say like, what is your household size or or how many individuals are in your household something like that because i i think if we ask how many people are supported by this income then people might get like confused with interpretation and not include themselves or their spouse necessarily and only include their kids you know oh, like that point. might be so if we just ask how many people are in the households then i think that might give a better picture Except that before, when I had said that, remember that I can't remember who commented that maybe there there are people living in the in, in the household that aren't actually being supported. 
by in in the to the, the opposite of that is I know people who are still sending checks to their 30 something kids, you know, who live in across the country. Exactly. So if we're trying to get like to how many people are supported by this annual income that you're choosing, maybe we just say that as opposed to whether they're in your household or not. Right. Because I mean, how many of us supported our kids when they went off to college? They weren't living in the household. But then, and you also could have people like returning, you know, a lot of young adults have returned home and yet they're working. So they're not actually being supported by their parents, but they're living rent free. So that's a type of support. So anyway, I think if we want support, we should be specific about what we're trying to get. What a quagmire. Uh, I, I would just go with the number of people in the house. And see, I would just go with how many people are you supporting <laughs> with this household income? <laughs> or do we care? I mean, it, the other thing to look at is do we do we care how many people are being supported? I mean, I mean to me, it makes people. sense on like if you have a household income of 100,000 with 10 people versus one person right. and you're looking at compensation, right? Yeah. Very so I, I get what Felicia is saying about like making it too complicated. Then people are like, oh, I have to overthink this and yeah. then answer it incorrectly. I, I'm i fine with either way. But if you're making 100,000 and you're supporting two or more kids in college at the same time, then to say how many are in your household, there might only be one of you in your household. But yet you're supporting two mm -hmm. kids, at least partially in higher education which is fairly common so well, and to further complicate it if you're talking about the past they might be just offering information here and now not the information that was appropriate to when they were serving which is right. really more the information we're after right yeah so i think this just keeping it at what's your annual household income gives us an idea it doesn't certainly fine tune it there's no nuance to that question unless we get more specific with other questions and how much you know do we want to add to this i don't know if demographics is actually a big concern for the committee or if it's just kind of a general idea that we want to get i think at this point my my uh support would go behind not adding any question like that. I, I just think there's too many ways to interpret it. Um, and there's too many complications to make the information as useful as we might want it to be. To your point, Dennis, oh, not Dennis, sorry, John. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm confusing my bedwells. Yeah. Okay. Um, should, <laughs> should we write something that explains if you're a previous, if you're not a current elected official, we're asking you to answer the questions as it were when you were an elected official. Oh, I, but then I, it gets, and, yeah, then that gets confusing because like the value, yeah. let's say, you know, what was someone earning at that time? And is it the equivalent of someone who's serving? Yeah, now? it's very complicated, but also like if someone was elected, finished, you know, 10 years ago, and they're giving information for now. I'm, I know this is something that I could have raised before I didn't think of it. I realize we've, yeah. The train has left the station on this, but that's actually, yeah, it's interesting. I would still support just letting it go. The fact that we're asking the demographic information to the degree that we are is still a big improvement over what they did in 2014. Okay. I agree. I, I just think that we can parse this out in a lot of different ways. And already, I think we're getting more fine tuned than we have been before, which is really helpful. If there's something we absolutely need, I think that's great. But otherwise, at this point, my instinct is to just let it go. I agree. I think for some of these demographic questions, like they're not going to change probably too much between the time that the person possibly held the elected position and currently 
Um, especially like, I mean, for example, if someone held the elected position when they were like in their 60s, like it's probably pretty unlikely that they went back to school and got like a master's when, when they were that old or that their household income, you know, dramatically went from 50,000 to 200,000. So I think, you know, chances are that they're still going to be in the same kind of like demographic bubble compared to where they were when they had the elected position. If they're not. So Felicia, does that mean that you're in support of a particular set of questions or I just want to make sure we're following? So I think like in terms of like what Sam said with like answering the questions as if they so as if they were still holding the position, like what their income was when they held the position, like adding that in. Um, when it goes the way it is, then it's up for their interpretation and chances are there's not going to be too much of a difference between whatever it was when they when they served a position and their current, you know, situation in most scenarios. Sam, what, what do you think? Yeah, I, I mean, if time is of the essence, I'm fine with it to go as is, you know. I, I do think a lot can change in a few years, right? If you leave, if you're juggling an elected official position in another job, and then you leave, you could take something else. I, I think you can get a, a huge variation depending on when you're asking people, you know, to, to how to answer these questions, but. Yeah, we could, we, could drop we should probably clarify somewhere though, because I think, don't you think that might come up? You mean in terms of whether they're answering the question for here and now today, or whether they're answering it when they were serving? Yeah, to me, it doesn't make sense to gather information on answering it here and now today, because I don't, I don't see how that helps our charge. That does, like to me, it doesn't give me data that would be useful for what our charge is. I think. I personally, I think that's a great point. I think that that should be part of the introduction to this. Please respond to these questions um, as they pertain to when you served. Well, then wouldn't we want to change them to what is, was your ha annual household income? I still think that I, I um, because people are going to see that question, what is your annual income? And the instinct is to answer in the present tense, because that's what the question says. You know, you don't have to change, obviously, the one about education. That is what it is. Unless I, it wasn't then. <laughs> and, and just a time, just a time reminder, we have 15 minutes left and it would be great. I would, it would be great to be able to get this out <laughs> um, just after this meeting. We still need to go through the email quickly. Yeah, I, mean, it, I, I think we just have to call it. It's so complicated. You know, somebody can make $25,000, $30,000, but have a trust fund worth $20 million. Right. Yeah. So it's just, I mean, what we, we, we could, we either beat ourselves to death over this or we just kind of say, we're, you know, this, this is only going to be so valuable. Sam and Felicia, it'd just be good to get final input in terms of whether we, your comments about whether we ask people to question to answer this as if they were when they were serving or not. I, I think that's the one question that's for me is still up in the air. Is that is that right? What if they served twenty years ago? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think you have a. I think we have a an issue of the data would be technically useless one way or another. If they, if someone served 20 years ago and answered it 20 years ago, we're not asking them to adjust for inflation, you know? So I, but I do think that someone who is a former elected official might think, wait, which way am I supposed to answer this? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it just comes back to, a, I know that, it, you know, we're not gonna get the perfect survey here, but Again, I don't see the point in asking people who are not current elected officials for their data now because it's not applicable to our committee's charge. 
So what if we had on the demographic page, kind of at the beginning, some explanation of, you know, if you're if you are a previously elected official, then please answer these questions as they pertain to you at that time. But you also, they would have to give us a date, a reference point. Well, they are. That's what, so one, it's not just demographics, right? Your profession. I mean, my <laughs> my profession's changed several times in the past few years. So, right. you know, I think it applies to all of the questions. So I'm not saying amend so every question they have to give us a date for it, rather. I'm not saying amend every question, rather adding something in the intro, yeah. adding something in the email, because the is slash was still applies, because it still is going to current elected officials. Can so we adding one thing that clarifies, if you are not a current elected official, please answer these questions as best you can in relation to when you were an elected official. Well, maybe you didn't understand what I said. I said at the top of the demographic page, have that explanation that if you were an elected official, ask it then. But what I'm talking about at that date is when was that, that you were an elected official? Do we have that somewhere up in yes, the Yes, that's a question. Yeah. yeah, we do. At the date. Okay, so then we have the date. And if they are answering for when they were an elected official, and we explain that on the demographic page. But my point is it shouldn't be on the demographic page because there's questions oh. and the pre there's a previous set of questions where the data can change depend, you know, again, what is their profession? That's not a demographic question. What was their occupation when they held an elected official position? So that's why I'm suggesting so it go in either the it go in the email and the preamble, whatever you want to so call it. I, I, I want to interrupt um, again because of time. And also, we do need to review the email. So this could be a good bridge to go to the email to find out how to best enter that information. Do people agree? Sure. Okay. Sure. Felicia, can you take us to the email, please? One thing that jumped out is De 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 Deb was uh, omitted. Yeah, we need to add oh. Deb. Thank you. Thank Deb. you. Yes, I think I took this off of um, one of the previous meeting minutes. Um, mm -hmm. So yes, Deb, I will. I can add you right now. <laughs> Great. All right. Um, I'm gonna again. I'm gonna read through this out loud. Um, Hello, insert name, in accordance with Northampton Ordinance 5-5C, which states that the city, quote, shall periodically, but not less frequently than 10 years, study the adequacy and equity of the compensation, benefits, and expense allocations of municipal elected officials and report its findings and recommendations to the mayor and city council. Um, and that's end quote and um, comma. Is there a period after council or is that just on my screen? Um, yeah, there is. I took this from uh, the mayor's minutes when okay. she um, like approved all of us on it, that, that specific okay. quoting. So that's what I took it from. And the ordinance wording, even though there's some grammar issues with it, we're going to leave alone, right? <laughs> yes. Okay. So just want to be <laughs> just want to be clear. It is what it is. We don't change it. Members mm -hmm. of the elected officials compensation board seek your input and experience regarding your time as an elected official. Paragraph break. We invite you to participate in this brief questionnaire, which we have spent a long time doing. Just kidding. We invite you to participate in this brief questionnaire and answer all questions truthfully and fully. If you would be interested in discussing the compensation of your elected position in more detail, please respond to this email expressing your interest to do so, and a board member will be in communication with you. Or you may reach out to one of the listed board members below. Insert survey link. Paragraph break. Paragraph break again. Important privacy notice because this document is being created with the scope of work of a public commission. It is public record and therefore available to the public upon request. This questionnaire will not ask for your name or other personal information overtly. However, content such as positions held, titles, dates, demographics, etc., et could suggest your identity. If you wish to remain entirely anonymous, be mindful of the information you include. Remember, 
your response cannot be deleted once submitted. The elected official, paragraph break, the elected officials compensation board thanks you and we are listed below. Okay, um, this looks wonderful to me personally, but we have this issue about how to answer the questions based on when you served. But also, I have a couple of questions just about how it's written. Isn't our name something with advisory in it? It is. It's okay. yes. And also, insert name up above. I think we should take that out. Oh, well, that, that's the, where the person's name is going to go for the email. Like when we send the email, to, it'll be sent to them. It's the way that it's set up in a form. Is that correct, oh. Felicia? So it'll mm -hmm. auto add the name? Yes, that was my plan. Yes. Right. And the same. Does that, does that then seem to the person, just like that Google thing, doesn't that seem to the person if we're inserting their name that it's no. not anonymous? Or am I missing something? So it would go to the person because we have their, you know, it's on record that they were an elected official. But then when they click the survey link, it doesn't get tied to them. So um, whether we choose to use the Qualtrics survey or the Google Docs survey, it doesn't get tied back to them because it doesn't collect their email response when they do it. So every single person will get the same exact link. So um, it, it, it's not like it's a specific link to a specific email. So okay. you just like copy and paste the link in. So it won't collect their emails. And I think everybody would hopefully understand that they're getting the email and that we know their name based on the fact that we have those demographics like we, we know like john had said like we could run a report of like who's worked for the city and who has like who's worked the city and what positions they held so that's where we're getting that information versus the survey is collecting yeah. the survey itself is anonymous yes yeah. Yeah. thank you um, all right. So great. Is there um, so is there a, a suggestion as to how to add the line saying that please answer this survey um, as the, the information pertained to you when you served? Because that that's an important piece of information. I would imagine oh. that that would be at its own line. Yeah. Well, it should be for the survey link, right? Well, I do have it here um, where it says regarding your time as an elected official. So oh. maybe adding another line there about mo like most specifically about the demographics. We want them to answer the demographic questions as if it was the time that they served. Um, then maybe just adding an additional piece there. I think that's a great idea. That's a good location. And I think we do need to reiterate it because I don't think people would assume by that line alone that they should answer it right. from that time period. That's good. I, I also wonder, <laughs> Felicia, if we might want to move the survey link, because I don't know, you know, when I'm reading something and I see a, survey, a link and I'm like, okay, I'm going to take the survey, I might pass over that second, that last paragraph. So I'm wondering if we ought to put the insert survey link beyond, below the privacy notice. I would be more inclined to put important privacy notice bold and leave it where it is. Or bold, something that makes sure that people see that what this is, because I'd like them to read that paragraph. Right. I, I, I agree. I, that's because it is kind of secondary. It's not really part of the introduction, but I agree. It does need to be called out a little more. Yeah. Okay. That, that's a good point. Um, with the Google Docs survey, I was also, I put the, um, the privacy notice at the top. It like, so instead of including the whole email at the top, I put it in, I put just the privacy notice. Um, and I don't know if there's a way to do that. Yeah. Um, I just want to make a note to the group that I, I have to leave um, like just past 630. I'm glad to make someone else the host on this to continue the conversation, um, but I have a 540, I'm sorry, 645 that I have to make. Um, so do we feel we can wrap this up? And if we feel we can wrap this up in a few minutes, I think that's great. Otherwise, I just wanna make sure that someone else is a host. I think we can wrap it up, can't we? We're almost wrapped, aren't we? 
Okay. Well, there's other stuff on the agenda, probably. But John, no, I, have, I have to leave too because of my daughter's birthday, and then we won't have a quorum, so we better wrap it up. And I have to leave too because I'm exhausted. I've been on the road all day, so. Um, Felicia, do you feel that you have an, a line that you can add to that and send it back out to us following the end of the first paragraph or not? Yeah, I can add a line. Um, is it within rules? Am I allowed to reply all <laughs> or send it to all at the same time? You yeah. can send out oh. information to everyone. People just can't reply. Gotcha. To you. Okay. So it has to be like its own separate email. I mean, it can be, it, it's more that like we can't deliberate, which is why we don't reply all to it. But for information sharing purposes, we can send things out to each other so long as we don't deliberate outside of an open meeting. Okay. okay. So if, she, if Felicia sends it out to us with all the corrections and we look at it and we do not get back to her, I mean, do not get back to, let's say you get back to me on an individual basis within a certain amount of time. Felicia and Tara can assume that this is a go ahead and they can send it because we do want to get this out soon. Uh, the other yeah. concern is we do need to get this out. Yeah. Okay. The, the only other thing we need to add to this is we are going to need to figure out we're, we're going to need to give people a deadline as to when they have to have this done. Yeah. And add advisory on there to uh, Felicia, if you could, before yeah. that. Yeah. Um, so in order to keep this moving and knowing that there's still some deliberation and we're bumping up against time, Felicia, I recommend, um, and Sam, please correct me if I'm wrong. I recommend that you make the changes and then, um, and then you and Tara check in with me and we'll see where we are. The only other piece we, because the other piece we need to add to this is a deadline. And what I don't know necessarily is, you know, do we send this out for a week? Do we send it out for two weeks? how much time do people need usually for these things? Um, I usually think it's over a week, but I, I don't I don't have guidelines on that. I feel like two weeks would probably be good. And I also think that most of the time people are going to either do it when they get it or not do it. <laughs> so I think two weeks would be good, but maybe, you know, we send it out in the first batch and then about a week to maybe 10 days later we send it out again just to everybody um and then kind of include something at the bottom that says like if you've already participated in your survey thank you so much like please you know ignore this email kind of thing um, i i concur with that i uh, think yeah. yeah okay so um is there anything else is there any other business that we need to discuss during this meeting. <laughs> okay. Um, then uh, Felicia, please make the changes and please get in touch with me and then we'll figure out those next steps. We do have some report outs, but that can wait until our next meeting. One of those things, we also need to decide the next meeting, but I'm gonna reach out to, to the group with information about when that should be and, and what the options will be. And then we'll go from there, I'll get your input. Um, is uh, can I have someone move to adjourn? I move to adjourn. Second. I'll second. Okay. Sam. Uh, John. Yes, I. Yay. Felicia. Yes. Deb. Yes. I vote yes. And Peter. Yes. <laughs>